So when we consider the difference between a full multiplier and a constant multiplier, we noticed that specific multiplier operands were particularly easy to multiply by. Specifically, those multiplier operands that are powers of 2, like 4 or 16 or 32 and so on. And so the reason that these multiplier operands are particularly easy is because they have only a single uh, 1 and the remainder of their bits are nulls. So 100, 1000, and so on, right? And so this means that when we expand the sumands, we find that we only have one active sumand, and the rest are all trivial. And so we don't actually have to do any additions. We only end up shifting the uh, multiplicand uh, by as many bits as uh, there is an active bit in the multiplier, and we don't need to do any additions. So this happens when we have long strings of zeros in the multiplier operand, which allows us to trivialize most of the sum ends. Now, the booth recording algorithm is an algorithm that allows us to also benefit from long strings of ones, not just from long strings of zeros. So if you, if you uh, consider a four bit uh, word, then the worst case would be if we have all ones in the four bit multiplier. Because all ones means that we have four active sum ends. And so if we multiply 1111 by A, whatever A is, we have two options to do this. First, we can, uh, we can add A four times as a sum end, four times shifted relative to each other, of course, which is the hard way. Or the easy way would be to recognize that 1111 is simply minus 1 in 2's complement, and that the result of this is simply minus A. And so the booth recording algorithm recognizes that long strings of 1's can be represented in 2's complement as a minus 1, and it utilizes this by recording the multiplier operand um, to remove long strings of ones and reduce them to long strings of zeros. This can be applied even if the uh, long strings of ones are in the middle of the multiplier, not at its beginning or at its end, and even if we are using unsigned numbers. So let's take an example here. Uh, let's imagine that we are multiplying uh, by the multiplier operand 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. This multiplier operand has a string of three ones isolated in the middle. This string of, of, of three ones is equal, equivalent to seven, but because it is shifted to the, uh, to the left by one bit, it is equivalent to 14. So if you look at just this part of the multiplier, it's equal to 14. Now we can recode this so that in the next higher bit position, there is a one, and then we have zero, zero, and then there is a minus one at the LSB of the string of ones, and then we have a zero. If we go back and look at this and isolate it alone, that's one zero zero minus one. So now we are using a uh, not a binary representation of numbers, but a trinary representation of numbers, where each bit position could be zero, one, or minus one. And let's interpret the decimal equivalent to this. This is going to have a value of eight. 0, 0, and minus 1, so 8 minus 1 is equal to 7, which means that we have not changed the value of the isolated 7 from before, or in other words, uh, if we take the shift into consideration, then this is 16, and this is minus 2, which is equal to 14. So why is this useful? This is useful because we are now, we have now reduced this multiplier upper end, from 101110 into 100 minus 10, and we have reduced the number of active ones in the multiplier operand by compressing the sequence of uh, ones into a sequence of zeros, one and minus one. So, this is the main contribution of booth recoding. It allows us to compress long strings of ones into strings of zeros. And so we can make use of, uh, of strings of ones as well as strings of zeros. Now we have to consider how we can recode the multiplier operands 
in a systematic way and how we can um, how we can perform the multiplication operation after we have done the recording. So doing the recording in a uh, systematic way is actually pretty easy. What you have to do is you have to cover overlapping pairs of bits within the multiplier operand. And whenever you see a 0, 0, you interpret this as a 0. Whenever you see a 0, 1, you interpret it as a 1. Whenever you see a 1, 0, you interpret it as minus 1. And whenever you see a 1, 1, you interpret it as a 0. The best way to illustrate this is to look at specific examples, because this helps not only to illustrate how to do the recording, but also to illustrate why this works. So, for example, let's consider the uh, case where the multiplier operand is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So this is the multiplier operand. Now, we begin, we always begin by adding a 0 after the binary point. Even if the register was purely integer in the first place, we always add a 0 after the binary point. And then we start looking at overlapping pairs of bits. So we look at the pairs of bits, but we always look at each bit twice. If you don't have enough bits on the LSB side, you should sign extend so that you have an even number of bits and can cover them with overlapping pairs. Now, when you look at a pair of bits, starting from the uh, fractional bit before the uh, binary point, and you see a 0, 0, that is interpreted into a 0. So you interpret each pair of bits, and because you have overlapping pairs, you will end up with the same number of bits as the original operand. When you see a 0, 0 again, you interpret it as a 0. And then when we see a uh, 1, 0, we interpret it according to the table as a minus 1. Then a 1, 1 is interpreted according to the table as a 0, a 1, 1 as a 0, a 1, 1 as a 0, a 0, 1 as a 1, a 0, 0 as a 0, 0, 0 to 0, and 0, 1 gets interpreted into a 1. So into a minus 1, I'm sorry. So why does this make sense? Why does this, um, why does this, why does this translation in the table make sense? All it's saying is, look at pairs of bits and try to guess from the pairs of bits what's happening. So if we see a 0, 0 in a pair of bits, that means we are moving through a string of zeros. And therefore, that gets interpreted as a 0. If we see a 0, 1, that that means we are exiting from a string of 1s. You only see a 0, 1 when you are exiting from a string of 1s. And according to the example we just saw, when you are exiting from a string of 1s, you have to add a 1 at the next highest uh, MSB in order to compensate for the minus 1 that you added at the LSB. So that's why 0, 1 gets interpreted to 1. But 0, 1, 1, 0 means that you are entering into a string of 1s, which means you add a minus 1 to the LSB. 1, 1 means that you are within a string of 1s, which after both recording is going to be uh, reinterpreted as a string of zeros, and so uh, pairs of 1s get interpreted as zeros. So in this case, you see that the last bit position is going to be interpreted as minus 1 because we are using uh, two's complement, and so this is a negative number. So let's look at another example. In this case, uh, the example is 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 dot 0. And this helps illustrate why we have to insert this additional uh, 0. Because sometimes you have a 1 at the very first bit position, and so you need a 0 uh, to precede that 1 to allow you to uh, interpret the operand properly. So if you look at this pair, it's a 0, 1, which gets interpreted as a minus 1. 1, 1 means we are within a string of 1s, so that gets interpreted as a 0. 1, 1 means we are still in a string of 1s, 0. 0, 1 means we are exiting a string of 1s, we have to add an active 1. 0, 0 interpreted as a 0. If you look at this and compare it to this, this is 8 minus 1, which is 7, and this is 7. So you end up with the same value. So what are we going to do then if we use this in a multiplier? What, what's going to happen is that the multiplier operand, so you have two operands, A times B. So before you do the full multiplication, B goes through this recording. And this allows us to reduce the number of partial products that result 
trivial, non-trivial partial products that result from multiplication because we reduce the number of ones in the upper end. So what's the worst case if we don't use uh, booth recording? If we have if you have like a four bit multiplier. So the worst case is of course when you have all ones because that means you have no non-trivial uh, um, sum ends. But if you use booth recording actually, this is not bad. This is almost as good as all zeros, right? So there has to be another worst case. And the other worst case actually when you use both recording is when you have alternating pairs of ones and zeros. So let's look at this example um, where we have one zero one zero one zero. And so we add a zero after the binary point and we look at overlapping pairs. Zero zero is zero. Zero one means we are entering a, uh, a string of ones. But then immediately zero one means we are en exiting the uh, uh, string of ones which adds a one, one zero, minus 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, minus 1. And so you end up with almost as many, not actually more non-trivial uh, uh, sum ends than you had in the original operand, which means that the booth recording algorithm doesn't always work to reduce the number of non-trivial sum ends. But statistically, it will work to do that because you are a lot less likely to, to see cases with interleaved zeros and ones like this than to see cases with blocks of zeros and blocks of ones, which is usually what's going to happen statistically in uh, multipliers with a larger number of operands.